tedious way to do things, but it's really cold outside. Uh, so I just wanted to get a few little pieces to make up uh, uh, a little stop block for the trim. And uh, what I've decided to do is just make them out of a few bits of this little bit of plywood that was in a decorative box that I kind of hacked apart. Um, it's just wood. It's wood is wood is wood. It's plywood, but who gives a shit? It's just gonna glue that stuff together. It couldn't be easier. You just cut yourself a few little pieces or you cut a solid piece. I've cut solid pieces in the past. Um, like just out of whatever. You just cut a little solid piece. I've done something else to this, but anyway, same kind of thing. Uh, but this time I thought I'd try and make one that's fitted right to the cavity. So you can see this one is a, a touch askew. So the cavity hasn't been cut askew. But I'll just glue those together, round them over, and stick them in the cavity of the guitar. So let's go test for fit. Alright, so what I want is for these to... They'll be... Okay, so I can already see one of them is too big. So it needs to be sanded down a bit. But I just want those to fill the entire cavity right up to the level of the, the bar. And it is. It's fitting perfectly. So this one needs to be trimmed down a bit. So just sand that down a bit. Alright, so let's just grab some sandpaper. And just more. It's usually a bit of a pain to film this stuff, but it is interesting. I mean, these are the, these are the little details that you struggle with after the fact. And here's where we get a little bit, a little bit lazy. I don't exactly want to go ahead and cut a whole fresh, brand new fresh piece. I just want this to fit. So I'm going to kind of cheat a bit with my last piece. You can see here my last piece doesn't go all the way to the bottom. But like, if anybody's going to niggle me over, over this for sustain or whatever, I don't think that's a big deal. It fits flush to the bottom, it fits flush to the top, so I'm going to glue those three pieces together and then I'm going to guess, uh, see if we can sand these into submission. So let's do that. Now you don't need to use fancy wood glue or anything like that. This isn't, you're not engineering rocket science here. solid little block, except for the back side, but you won't see that, and that's solid enough.
there we go. <sighs> Sorted. And if it looks like there's a little gap there, there's not. I put a little bit of veneer in there just to take up that space. And then I wax the sides so that, like, it's a good friction fit. That's going to be hard to take out of there. <laughs> um, but that's it. Done. Don't even have to do anything to it. Could paint it or do something to it, but I'm not going to do anything to it. Alright, so I just got done making a block for the trim for this, and uh, I realized that the video I put together was a bit, uh, a bit quick. Because really, all that this needed, uh, all that needed doing here was it just needed to be have the electronics put back in. Um, the issue with the ground was was really no big deal, as it turns out. Um, it's totally quiet. No ground noise, no nothing. Okay, so, um, this guitar is, well, it's back together. It's back together, it plays well. I didn't really show any of the setup. I mean, I, I find setup videos pretty boring. I'm kind of over them. Let me just talk about what I did real quick. Essentially, uh, what we did is we dialed in, just for those of you wondering about the measurements on this guitar, we dialed in 3 ths on the high E. We dialed in about, let's see where we're at here. Yeah, we got uh, just slightly between 4 and 5 64ths on the low E. Now this bridge is a little weird, um, but it works. The measurements are okay. So also we have the nut action is just the way it was when I got it. I didn't really muck with it. It's pretty low. It doesn't seem to be causing any problems at all. Uh, the neck relief is fine, pinched at the 1st and the 17th, so we got about uh, 12, 12 foul relief there. So, as far as its measurements are, are, are concerned, it's set up pretty well. Um, we got a nice, I don't know if you can see that, but we got a nice 9.5 inch radius. These radius gauges are really great. This really helps with setup. Since deciding to make one of these, um, I've got 9.5, 7.25, and 10. You can actually make a video. I had intended to make a video about how to make those. All I did was I went on the internet and I, I downloaded the, the little template, uh, printed that onto some clear paper, threw it on some veneer, uh, then I put a some tape on mine just so I could see the letters. Pretty stable. Uh, I glued a couple of pieces of veneer together so that they would be nice and straight and stable, and then I just cut it out. Works great. I mean, it's not the most precise thing, again, like, not like any tool I've made, but it works. Works good enough. And uh, it's really helped, it's really helped my setups because that's some, uh, that when I was doing setups, that was one of the things I struggled with, was just getting all the other strings perfect. And once you dial in both your low E and your high, or your high E and your low E, you can dial in all the rest of the strings with just that radius gauge. It's like, it's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I use that every time now. I use, since I created that radius gauge, I use it every time, and I've checked all my other guitars, and some of them I was pretty bang on on, and a couple needed you know, uh, a couple little tweaks, but no, that's that's essentially all I did when I set this up. Uh, uh, up. And then, of course, uh, I just checked the... Make sure that it was intonated, and it is. Um, 
yeah, neck is good. Frets are good. Frets are really low, very low. This has had many fret levels and or crowns, or the frets just started out that way. So I didn't do anything to the frets, really nothing. Uh, all I did was clean them up. I gave them a bit of a polish up. Uh, they didn't seem overly dinged or dented, just needed a bit of a polish up and that's it. I didn't want to start mucking around with these because I would say the next thing to have to happen to this neck is definitely a refret. These, these frets are very, very low. I don't know how easy that is to see, but they are extremely shallow. So all I did, like I said, is just give them a quick polish up. Because uh, like I say, uh, th this is going to play until it needs a refret. I mean, it's a 1972 or 73 guitar. Uh, there were some comments. Yeah, that was the other thing or reason I decided to make a bit more video about this thing, because this is really going to be the last video of this thing. I'm, <laughs> I'm done with it. I'm, I'm over having it. <laughs> it's nice to play. It's nice to have around, but I want to see it go out the door, because in exchange, I get back my favorite guitar, which I loaned Eric to, uh, to play while <laughs> he waits for this one. So that's been a bit of motivation to get this thing finished. So it is now completely, totally not a thing left to do with it. I put the strap pins on. We just saw us make a little, a little block for the trim, uh, which he had asked for. I didn't think we needed it, but I have left this thing set up for a few days. There seemed to be a touch of inst the tuning instability, although I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. The, it's been set up for nearly a week. That was one of the things holding me up. One of the last things holding me up was I, I had it set up without any of the electronics in it, and I just wanted to make sure everything was stable, it wasn't going to move around, and that the setup that I gave it was going to stay. Uh, so the setup that I gave it did stay. The tuning I did find a little unstable, and maybe it was just because I didn't stretch the strings well enough, but uh, essentially, yeah, that's why I decided to throw a block into it today, and because I had some more time. thing. Normally the neck pickup and the bridge pickup sound totally, totally, totally different, but here's the, here's the bridge pickup. That's the neck pickup. And they are very close together. This is just slightly, slightly less... I don't know what to say about the tone, but listen. They sound nearly identical to me, just one sounds louder. It sounds like it just sounds like I've got the tone rolled off on the net on the bridge pickup. It's really odd. So let's see if I can match that tone. sound identical. You roll the tone off on the on the bridge pickup, and it sounds identical to the neck pickup. So weird, these vintage pickups. But the, the middle pickup, the middle position, that just sounds like mud to me. That sounds terrible. Oh, maybe that's because I had the tone rolled all the way off, but I still don't like it. Yeah, it sounds great, but there is one problem with it. As soon as we plug in, let me just get it set up. Alright, 
so we do have one other problem. The problem is feedback. And the reason that these pickups feed back is because they probably either were never potted or they need to be repotted. And that's not something I can do. I mean, I could, we could repot them, but I think he's just going to get some new pickups. But essentially, everything else works. But yeah. It's good, that, isn't it? Under high gain. So you can control it, and you can also not be facing your big stack amplifier when you're playing it, <laughs> but it only happens under high gain. When I'm playing it clean, it doesn't do it at all. sounds fabulous. You can have it cranked right up and it's... Bridge pickup is brilliant. I think they probably do need to be repotted. Um, but yeah, they squeal like a pig under high gain. None of my other guitar. I've never had a guitar that squeals like that. And then I started reading about it, and people are saying, no, it needs to be repotted. And you could try putting a bit of uh, foam underneath the pickups and all this other bullshit to get them to stop squealing like that. But you know what? First thing he said when when we talked was the owner of this guitar. The first thing he said was, oh, "I'll just buy some new pickups. We'll save these. We'll stick them in a box." And I was like, "That's a stellar idea." Although I really, really like that that one neck pickup. Frankly, I could take out the other two and use it just with that. People forget you can control the tone of your pickups with your, your volume. through some final little thoughts here. Pickard cracked at nearly every bolt, uh, just as old and needs replacing. Uh, I did fill in these little pockets around the neck with some veneers and glued them in just to stabilize the neck pocket. Um, so that's not going anywhere. That's going to stay muy bueno for uh, a long time to come. I just went in while this was installed. I had some, I don't know why I didn't film it, but 
All I did was I wrapped saran wrap or cling film or whatever you want to call it around the neck and then put it back on, put some veneers in there, load of glue, neck back off, veneer or saran wrap off the neck because the glue doesn't stick to the, just sticks to the saran wrap which you can rip off. And that's it. You're essentially, you're essentially gluing in you're fitting, you're fitting those pieces right into the pocket around where the neck is. So they stay where they are. Once the glue's dry, that's it. Bob's your uncle. Um, so that neck's not going anywhere. It's nice and stable. This is a cool old guitar, I'll tell you what. Oh, yeah. I made a big fucking boo-boo here. So it's like the last second of me soldering this thing. <laughs> and I... Draw. I had cloths around the guitar. I'm so stupid anyway. I should have taped this up, but anyway, it's, it's the guitar trying to tell me something. I dropped a big old blob of solder here right in the bottom of the guitar. Looks awful. Tried to clean it up, but you know what? Fuck it. The owner and I talked about it. I gave it its first ding. I gave it its first love marks. I'm done, I'm done fighting with the finish on this thing. It turned out the way it turned out. It just looks like an old guitar now with a few dings in it. It's... I'm not even gonna bother polishing it anymore. It's... I just wanted it to play well. And it looks like if, um... You know, it looks like we might see this thing again if he decides to put some new pickups in it. But frankly, um, it's come a long way, this guitar. It's come a long way. It's definitely changed. And, um... If, you know, for those of you wondering about just, you know, kind of what we did and where we're at, that was, uh, that was the point of this video, and I think I'm probably going to call this talking out. Anyway, so that's it. Threw the block in, got her all together, got her set up, it's looking good, it's playing good. 72 strat lives. Or 73. Oh, somebody mentioned that there might be a date in the heel. Somebody's been into the or neck pocket. Somebody's been into that neck pocket well before I have and scratched all that away. So, anyway, it is what it is. Let's hope the owner likes it. That's it on the 72 Strat. It's been a couple of months of saga with this thing. And uh, I'm happy to have it done. I really am quite happy to have be finished with this thing. Um... I'm hoping the owner will like it. I think it's cool enough just the way it is. It doesn't look awesome. I mean, the finish doesn't look awesome, but it looks good enough. And frankly, if it gets passed around like the dirty whore I know it's going to, that's going to be plenty fine. Um, so, yeah, I can't really think of any other little niggles that I forgot to explain or where we were at. But if I leave any final thoughts... Uh, it's that uh, the spray nitro lacquer, uh, you need twice as much of that as you think you do. They thinned it down quite a lot, and that's where I ran into all my problems was the paint was a lot thinner than I'm used to. I'm used to the really thick automotive poly stuff that you can pretty much sand down with a baseball bat, and it's fine. But there's nitro stuff. This is my first time working with nitro. And holy crap, is it thin. I'm, I burned through it three times. So I, I essentially ran out of... I, I ran out of paint and lacquer. <laughs> I mean, I have a bit of paint left over, but I'm well out of, out of lacquer. I used two full cans of clear on that. And, uh, you, you know, talking to my friend David uh, in, in, the, uh, in Australia, Fletcher, um... He explained to me quite well how the spray bomb stuff, yes, it's the same material, but it's really, 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 really thin. So the next job I do is not going to be with spray bombs. I'm going to save up and I'm going to get some proper spray equipment. And that'll be the next thing I do. And that there, that there's the target. But that won't be for a while. I'm just getting that together for now to play. And that's what I hope I try to do here with this guitar. I hope that I tried to sort of semi-rescue it from its really checkered past. The one we use. There we go. She's done. <laughs>